Hey everybody, welcome back to Coffee and Croissant with me, Christian Alphonse. It's a podcast show about food and travel. Today, I have a special guest, special guest, uh, Daniel Calderon. Daniel Calderon is a filmmaker, entrepreneur, owner of 94 Productions, currently runs a podcast series, Corner Talks, where he talks about wellness filmmaking with him and his friends. Daniel, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you so much for uh, asking me to join this podcast. Uh, I want to say, like, I'm really proud of you, you know, for starting this mm -hmm. uh, kind of new venture. It's uh, quite exciting stuff. Looks to be promising and happy to be on here. Well, happy to have you meet, Daniel. We go way back since 2017. And we'll definitely let the audience know how we met and how we got, how we stayed in touch. Uh, today's yeah, show, sure. we're going to be focusing on about Italy. Um, Daniel is Italian and I spent some time in Italy. Uh, we're going to be talking about the COVID-19 travel updates and how to get to Italy. We're going to also be talking about Italian culture, Italian food, and we're going to have our last segment segment about um, Italian pasta. If it's underhype or overhype, is it mid, if it slaps. So we're going to have a good and very fun and interesting show. So let's get the party started. So Daniel, um, let's tell the audience how we, how we met. So yeah, for sure. I, I, I'll tell my side of the story. I'm very curious to know <laughs> your side of the story. My side, you know me, I have an imagination. So my side might be a little bit exaggerated. <laughs> we might have met in an underground alleyway. <laughs> but we actually met at work. We met in 2017. I was working at Entertainment One. I was in the TV production side and Daniel was working in marketing. And we met in the lunchroom. At that time, E1 was having um, training video sessions. And Daniel asked if I could be part of his team. I, I gladly said yes. Yeah. And from there, our friendship grew. Um, around that time, Daniel was aspiring to become a filmmaker. So glad to see him being part of the most exciting part of the journey, to, if I'm being quite honest, Thank where you. he's growing connections, building his brand. And he's making really good shorts. Currently, right now, his shorts beautiful. is winning all these awards. Each time I'm seeing him in <laughs> Still IG, going. I'm Still seeing going, man. more yeah. and more awards. Thank so you. congrats, Daniel. And mm -hmm. I think that's briefly the story how we met. We'll get a little bit more deeper in our in our stories together. Yeah, for but, sure. Uh, right Daniel, right. like, did I miss anything? No, you said it right there. Like, you know, when I, I first remember, when I first uh, officially met you was uh, you were on my floor. I was in the marketing department. You're in the accounting department. And mm -hmm. uh, you came walking around and kind of introduced yourself. And that's one of the qualities that struck me is your your approach and your you're just not afraid to like throw yourself in there into a room, right? Mm -hmm. um, networking, which I should mention, that was the word um, you've always advocated uh, since day one. And it's something that I've always, you know, kind of cherished, right? Like valued uh, as a person um, because it's got me to this point in my career. So mm -hmm. I just remember like what I'm trying to get at because I've grown a lot since 2017. And I remember you just having, you know, the confidence to go into a floor. You didn't even know um, the people and interact with them. And um that's when I remember like standing up saying, Hey, what's going on? Like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, what's going on? You're like, and then I remember you first saying like, you know, I'm in film. I love movies. That's why I'm here. And it was kind of astonishing. I'll be honest. If I can just, if I want, if I can mention this, uh, I don't know if you had the same experience, but the company we worked at, not a lot of people like were coming from film backgrounds yeah. or intensive film studies. So when you said like, no, I'm, I'm, you know, a former, uh, study of film, uh, theater, I said to myself, wow, like I have to know more about you. I want to be <laughs> friends with you. Right. Um, and like you said, and make you, uh, join my project. Um, that was a really fun time. I remember that we cast you and we did a little <laughs> video. I just, I want to throw that in there just to intersect. Like, do you remember how much I hustled on that video? Oh, you hustled so <laughs> I much. Did it, <laughs> it I did it in between wide. work. <laughs> it was a company-wide thing just to help us more about training and yeah. daniel just put himself in there <laughs> but, I, so but i did it on my lunch break i did it on like a coffee break like i did it and even my team was like where did daniel go and Chris yeah. was like, don't you don't worry he's gonna premiere it soon <laughs> it was worth uh, it buddy it was worth it, was it. you worth, gotta well, do it yeah it was a lot of fun um uh, definitely yeah. saw different parts of the building during the For video sure. of course yeah Perfect. So let's transition into COVID-19 travel updates. So we're both currently in Ontario. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've read the good news. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, yeah, but sure. good news is, is that uh, Doug Ford is going to open it up. 
Duck Ford's yeah, gonna I heard. open it up in March. Uh, now specifically, this is from the Globe and Mail. He's specifically gonna release. He's gonna list. Yeah, I was all, gonna say March, right? Yeah, March of next year. So all wow. the long term plans related to COVID nineteen would be released. Let me quickly in ask March. you: Do you Go think ahead. that's possible? Or do you think that's? Do you think it's gonna be okay by that time? I what, I think thoughts? uh I think he's very ambitious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But at this point in time, um, we must reach herd, herd immunity. Herd immunity, yeah. yeah the cases people, are keeping steady at like two years. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And some job places, I don't know your opinion on that, but some jobs are, are like requiring people to be fully vaccinated and that's oh, definitely yeah. going to help. Um, I know this Monday, uh, people are going to be like my gym. I go to Fit for Less. They right. just they sent me this amazing email. I was so excited about saying that like all the restrictions within the gym, because certain mm-hmm. parts of the machines were like completely closed off, would be lifted. Mm-hmm. So there's no need to do physical distancing at the gym. You can easily move around, and that's gonna be the nice. same thing for like arenas, restaurants. Oh, um, is that the movie like, theater? That's how it should be. And and I was like just just to interject here. Like mm-hmm. from day one, I was telling you like when they introduced the uh, COVID vaccine. Um, people could avoid it as much as they want, you know, uh, convince other people not to take it, but eventually they're being, they're going to implement it, uh, and make it mandatory. Uh, Mm -hmm. it's going to be part of our culture, like our lifestyle. Like I was at a restaurant and a movie yesterday, Mm -hmm. both places asked for a a certificate and people, (laughs) and, but as soon as you're in, everybody's roaming around doing their thing, whatever. And it's like, did you, did you honestly think it wasn't going to get to that point? They were just being nice about it in the beginning. Like it's Mm -hmm. up to you to get it. But there was no way they were going to let society function and say, oh, we have to shut down again because, you know, certificates uh, aren't applicable here. Yeah. But what are they going to do? Like, they can't, the government cannot print more money. Like, let's just be honest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how money. many times, and, and, I was on, and I was on, you know my story, I was on serve, right? Because I was mm-hmm. running a, a business. I was self-employed. And, um, you know, I obviously couldn't get any work. So yeah. I had to go on serve. And what I'm trying to get at is you can only do that for so long. Like it takes a yep. toll, not only for your mental health, but financial, right? Like how I <laughs> can't, can't live off of 24 grand a year. So <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, maybe man. back in our grandparents era, bro, I can yeah. buy a house by now. <laughs> exactly. Oh, right? wow. That's, that's such a true fact, yeah. man. Grandparents, yeah. you can buy a house with a penny at this point. <laughs> back yeah, those right. days. But yeah, but I'm very excited about this. So, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully in March, you know, things would be somewhat back to normal. I'm very yep. excited about it. And that's 100%. gonna be good news for traveling. So I have a friend from Italy and she's actually gonna to go to Italy sometime in November. And I think I don't know if you have family that that that's going to Italy. I, I don't have family going to Italy, but I have family there. That family there, okay. Yeah. But oh, I'm so curious to know how they're dealing with, with the whole pandemic, and I'll definitely ask that yeah, a bit they're... later. But if you're Canadian yeah. right now, um, mm-hmm. you can actually travel to Italy. So the COVID nice. travel uh, updates are a little bit weird all over the place. Uh, Daniel, do you know a bit of, about it? Um, uh, not too much. I, I know. Uh, I don't know if they lifted the board the the border uh, control. Yeah, they're going border to block it. in in the U.S. I don't know. I don't know the, the exact details, oh. but I know with the North American border. I'll, de- I'll definitely tell you more about it right now. Yeah, for so, sure. Like, I'd love to know. The, yeah, for Thank the U.S., you. they're gonna lift the border in in November. Mm-hmm. Uh, the biggest issue is that Canada has a very restricted regulation for COVID. One of the biggest ones right now is that you need to be you need to be fully vaccinated. That's one of the things. Mm-hmm. But you also need to have a negative COVID nineteen test that right. is that has been taken seventy two hours before your trip. That's wow. the most important part. So some places will allow you to enter the country uh, without being fully vaccinated, but once you enter, you need to you'll need to quarantine. And Italy is definitely one of the case. But let's say for the States, for instance, you know, you don't need to be fully vaccinated. You just need to show that you have negative COVID-19 tests. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, you do need to be fully vaccinated for the States. But more on that a bit later. But you it cannot, it can't be rapid testing. And that's the issue. So you have to do the molecular test. And that's a bit more different than rapid testing. Molecular test is a swap. This is fitting. Is when they do the swab up all the way up to your nose mm-hmm. and needs to be done 72 hours. The biggest issue with traveling now is coming back to Canada 
and have some yeah. little bit of horror stories from friends who went to Africa and coming back to Canada at a big, a really oh, hard time. Yeah. Because if you're positive, you know, you're staying there for a while until yeah, you get a sure, negative man. testing. Yeah. And, and and that happened? Like they actually came back positive? Oh, uh, they, they got, so I think from what he told me, he said like he probably got scammed. Um, oh where, <laughs> because like him within this whole group, because one of the group of friends, all of them were negative. It was only okay. him that was positive. And, and that just couldn't make sense. So he went outside of his hotel and actually got the test from somewhere else. And he came back negative. Because of that, he was finally able to get back to Canada. So right. that's something that people need to consider. But well, that's why I don't. I just okay. want to say, like, that's why I don't, uh, you know, me. I'm, I'm very cautious uh, about traveling. And not for, not for anything. Like, at this point, I'm vaccinated, right? Like, I yeah. do intend to leave the country or go on vacation or whatever, right? But it's not like this compulsion. Like a lot of people like have to go. And it's like, like you just described, like, do I want to deal with that hassle? Like oh. coming back and like, there's just way too many restrictions. Like I'm, I'm the kind of guy where it's like, I like, maybe, I don't know if it'll get to that point. Maybe it's a fantasy, but, mm. but uh, getting to, a, getting to some level where it's not as intensive, like mm-hmm. there's some herd immunity, some, uh, you know, trust or policy in place where if you are vaccinated, you know what I mean? Um there's that freedom to like just roam around and because that whole like i just I'm, I'm thinking back to when canada had those hotels that if you traveled mm-hmm. you have to stay in a hotel yeah right regardless for like three mm-hmm. days or something like i don't know i don't know how people do it but again everyone's different right yeah some people like risk some people well, like, to risk. like to take risk bro. <laughs> and you know what's funny is that my whole my whole career has been a risk so <laughs> i should be the one to talk right <laughs> yeah. uh that's so funny <laughs> <laughs> well you took a lot of chances in and they're finally paying off oh, thanks really buddy good. yeah yeah i just think Very that was that was ironic that like i'm I'm conscientious about traveling but meanwhile i'm just like yeah buddy i'm <laughs> i'm gonna put all my money down on this uh dream <laughs> oh man <laughs> i'm uh, um, that's all good but i love this i love this yeah i love that we're seeing some optimism and in, in traveling oh, and like i said i'm the kind of guy where as i see things you know i think it, i think it all comes down to like where where you want to travel to and i think that's something that you'll discuss not only on this conversation but future conversation on the podcast right yeah because when you want to go somewhere man you'll go like you'll, you'll find go a way. like yeah. for me man when i was 20, turned 25 and i wanted to go to la san diego and san francisco did like a west coast trip mm-hmm. i made it happen like yeah. i just went you know exactly that's 100 mm-hmm. percent. and i found it very interesting because i don't know if you can read this right here on the screen but for sure yeah you don't really need like a covid vaccination certificate to that enter is very Italy. interesting wow insane. but you do need to quarantine for at least 14 days that's what they said mm-hmm. but it's the only, the only issue for canadians is the coming back part that's the biggest issue yeah because you need to be fully vaccinated uh, that's one of the most requirements also have a negative covid test um if you're not fully vaccinated there's a lot more stuff that needs to be done of course but i'm, I'm always saying be fully vaccinated would be a lot easier to come in and out of the country just as long as you have the extra income to pay for those uh, negative COVID tests. Like those COVID tests, hopefully they're negative because you can't pay for negative COVID yeah. tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For <laughs> sure. Every careful with your words here. <laughs> hey, they're already, doing, they're already doing fake certificates. So I don't know oh, if they're going, going through that same problem. Is, yeah. Oh, it's no, even right here. Bro. Really? Yeah, Ontario, man. Yeah. I was oh, at a restaurant wow. the other day. Tell me more about this. I was, at a, I was <laughs> at a restaurant. I was at a restaurant the other day last week. Uh, with a friend and then we're like waitresses just making small talk while we're paying the bill and mm-hmm. uh she goes i'm like we're, we're like how are you finding things right like uh at work or you know managing clients and things like that patrons and she's like yeah she's like people are giving us such a hard time with these vaccine certificates and half of them are fake <laughs> i'm like what are you talking oh, about Lord. yeah like it's oh. a pdf form you know those fill-in forms those fill-in yeah, yeah, forms? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they do that apparently there's something oh, floating around man and I'm just like, wow. That's why the QR code is, is getting implemented. Man, well, I'm, I'm very excited for that QR code. I know they uh, installed it for uh, restaurateurs to do it. I already got it set up. You already no got it set up? It, though. Yeah, but no one scans it. Uh, from my experience, they just look really? at it. Really? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll ask you more about that right now. So, like, sure. it's the app, right? It's a Verify app on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store or whatever, right? Uh, yeah, I, I believe so. And it goes so. by restaurateurs? Yeah, I should full disclosure. I didn't really uh, set it up myself because I've been busy with work, so it was kind mm. of like a family thing. Mm. But um, like an, we had an agent take care of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I'm saying is, yeah, I'm not sure how it works exactly. All I know is that a QR code pops up, gives you your mm. date of birth, your name, 
and then um, that's what they're going to be making mandatory. The, the oh, certificate good. was temporary, but I know the QR code is going to be legit. Because oh, I don't know if good. you can, you can't fraud. Uh, oh, you can fraud it, man. I'm sure someone. Yeah, you can fraud everything, right? Well, you're a coder, so what am I saying, right? <laughs> yeah, man. You can fraud anything, man. Like, people don't Listen, care. I'm the wrong guy to talk to, guys. Right? <laughs> uh, but looks like right now, like, in terms of going back to our discussion about Italy, you know, the most important part of talking about Italy is to have, like, a self-declaration. And it's, like, a special organization that allows you to enter the country without issues at the airport. It's mandatory requirement for any nation, excluding, including visa in some countries like Canada. So we all know that COVID-19 is a bit contagious and there's a bunch of variants going on. And that's what Italy is doing to make sure that people are self-declaring themselves. But one, <clears throat> I don't want to say like one good side about this, even though there's, like, there's a slight good side about this, is that there's no tourists. So from I'm hearing that people who are going to Europe they can just do whatever they want to do. Uh, there's no tourists around. They can go to the Louvre, they can go to the Tuifel without any issues. So that's only the good side of it. <clears throat> so if you're willing to take, if you're willing to take the risk to go travel in Europe, well, the only good side is that there's no tourists there. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know who else would do it, but I know some people are dying to leave their house, but like they're dying to go and explore. So. Go ahead. Like, I do want to mention. Go ahead. I do want to mention that with Italy, like it's kind of concerning because I don't know how they're doing with the with their economy. But I do mm -hmm. remember last time I went to Italy, um, one of the tour guides said that Italy's economy is based off of uh, luxury and tourism. Yeah. So luxury, yeah, they still have. Um, luckily for them, like I can't touch that. But with tourism, it is questionable. Like I don't know how many people are going. But then again, man, like. Not because I'm from Italy, and I'm sure mm. we'll get more into why uh, Italy is a fascinating, beautiful country. But there's something about that. Like, everybody's going to go back. Like, no mm -hmm. one's going to say, like, have hesitations, right? If they're going back to the States full force, and they're the snowbirds and all that, mm -hmm. people are going to go back to Italy, right? Uh, okay. Especially our generation, like, that haven't experienced it yet. They're not going to avoid that country, right? So Man. they'll get it but, back. <laughs> um, but, that, but let me just say that again. Tourism and luxury. This isn't lumber. All right, Christian, like Canada. <laughs> this is tourism and luxury. And when they said luxury, uh, I'm like, what do you mean? They're like Prada, then mm -hmm. they're like Lamborghini, Ferrari. Versace, I'm like, wow, yeah. that's when you know that's a flex. Like they're that, they make so much money off of that alone. Mm -hmm. That that's that's what their economy's backed on. You know. I mean, well, that's so interesting for you to say. Um, I didn't know um, tourism was such a big part of the economy. Huge, you some, huge. I didn't know. You briefly mentioned that you, you have family early. How are they mm -hmm. doing with the whole pandemic? Yeah, they're doing uh, quite well. Uh, it's a different lifestyle over there. Like as mm -hmm. soon as I think the first or second wave uh, ended for them, mm -hmm. I think even the first, to be honest with you, from what I've seen, like on their Instagrams and how we communicate, like they've been out and not just in Italy, like they just travel throughout Europe. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what I mean by like the mentality is a bit different. Like the Americans have that liberal kind of, you know, mentality, mm -hmm. like everyone's independent, do your own thing. Mm -hmm. but they got more of like a free spirited mentality like you okay. only live once right um the beauty in life is through enjoying it right like it's not like over here where we were locked down for three four times or you know what i mean like staying in our houses so what i'm trying to get at is yeah they took it hard in the beginning it was very uh very scary um mm -hmm. what was going on uh when the cases were rising up and italy was like the top five countries to be hit Mm -hmm. But now I think uh, they've kind of adjusted, they've adapted. Everyone's vaccinated for the most part, um, or at least I know, like the cousins. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're living life, man. They're doing their thing like nothing <laughs> happened. No, one, no one's really talking about anything before. Before, I have to say, though, it was scary because every country is different, right? Yeah. Luckily for us, like, we don't realize it as Canadians that we have uh, the liberties, like privileges, where even though we were in lockdown, there, we could still walk around and do our thing. But in Italy, right, it was getting so bad that there was actually police in the streets that would ask you um, for some sort of like documentation to really? prove that, that it proved well to prove that you're allowed to you're given permission to roam around or you have some purpose as to why you're leaving your house. Yeah. And this is like the early days, though. It's not anymore. But this was like really that's what my cousin told me. Um, I don't know if it was like the big cities, but for, for the small towns. Yeah, there was definitely some oh, sort of authoritative <laughs> control. Yeah. 
I did hear like so what I heard about Italy is that they, they were having a hard time with the pandemic, especially because mm-hmm. he has an older population in Italy, Italy mm-hmm. compared to the younger population. They do, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I also heard about Venus. I, I remember Venus was having issues with water and they were a bit um under the water for a bit. Yeah. Um but yeah, yeah but, the city might no, I was just gonna say it was Venice. Uh, um yeah. I was fortunate enough to experience it in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's going to be around uh, by the end of the century. They said, like, not that we'll be alive, but um, wow, something to the effect that it's sinking. Yeah. Every Man, year. Hey, I gotta ask: is is Venice that is it that beautiful? Is it that gorgeous? It's beautiful. Yeah, I'll tell you what. What's mes- what mesmerizes people about Venice? It's the fact that it's completely immersive, but it's it's like a frozen in time, you know, um, place. Mm-hmm. So what that means is. When you're roaming around the streets, when you're looking at the buildings, the architectures, it's like you're dropped uh, in the middle of the 1500s, like the Renaissance period. And yes, you could argue there's so many places in Italy, like Rome and Florence, that give you that effect. And they do. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But Venice, like there's nothing that's modern. Like everything is stuck in that time period. Nothing was uh, improved upon. Nothing was renovated um because rome and all these places right you'll have like shops like prada like you'll just see like prada mm-hmm. and things like that and venice did have shops don't get me wrong but they're in the buildings of these renaissance uh type buildings right so it was really luxurious yeah uh is this venice yeah this is venice it's also yeah. fascinating it's also fascinating how, how to like move around like it's all on boats and gondolas and it's it's uh it's otherworldly i think that's what uh strikes people about it uh, have you done the gondola? Yeah, yeah. I did it because yeah. I said, when, who, who knows when I'll come back, right? So I said, <laughs> let me let me just experience it. Um, but see those taxis? See the one in the foreground? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's how you enter the city um, and those things. Oh, no way. Yeah, it's like a speedboat. Oh. And um, it's exactly like it's taken right out of a movie. I can see why uh, Hollywood films here a lot, uh, like The Italian Job and James Bond. Um, very cinematic, very picturesque. Yeah. And so I'm not so I don't know if you knew this about me. <clears throat> knew this about me. Um I actually took Italian first and second year of, okay. of, of my study. This, at all. <laughs> <laughs> this guy wants to be trilingual. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely took some Rosetta Stones, man. Yeah. I think Italian here. culture is something I, I really did enjoy a lot. I still enjoy it now. Um mm-hmm. but man, Italy was one of the places I always wanted to visit. Mm-hmm. and you know you did visit it right you went no uh, no graduation i didn't visit trip? it man oh I, what uh, I, I was trying to visit it so hard but i just couldn't fit it i couldn't you got fit stuck it in croatia like, <laughs> <laughs> i don't even croatia man it's, it's just so because italy in europe is a little bit out of your way especially if you're in france you're like it oh, is, it's, yeah it's so out of your way because i wanted to go to france and also portugal but i just couldn't fit italy and i was like you know i could always go another time and this is a perfect lesson for everyone. If you want to go somewhere, go now. Because you never know if you're going to have time to, to go in the future. But yeah, Venice is definitely some place I wanted to go. Um, and get, get to know that it is picturesque. Hopefully, it's not underwater. I can actually visit these gondolas and stuff. Yeah, for um, sure. So when was the last time you were in Italy? I know they maintain it. I just want to mention that. Maintain it, yeah. Yeah, so you know it's not about technology and things like that. Like, they're they're not going to let it happen. It's like Niagara Falls, right? Not that anyone maybe cares about that, but uh, <laughs> for people who haven't seen it yet or are not born yet, um, the erosion, right? It's receding backwards. It's like a centimeter every year or something or an inch. Mm-hmm. So eventually they predict it'll be so far back that you can't even, have, you, can't, you don't even have, wouldn't even have a proper vantage point to enjoy it, right? It's beauty, um, oh. taking its beauty. So what I'm trying to get at is apparently they're going to shut it down. I don't know if they're doing this already, but they're going to stop um, the water flow, mm-hmm. seal it up with like metal and cement and things like that uh, to prevent future erosion. Because it wow. makes sense, right? All that water yeah. like repeating, um, yeah. repeatedly like uh, exerting pressure. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like the Grand Canyon, right? Um, so they're taking care of that. Um, and, I'll do, and they'll do the same thing with Venice, 100%. Man, that's, that's actually going to be a big cost of infrastructure. I'm curious to know how the Italian government is going to budget for that. 
Yo. Tourism taxes. <laughs> Tourism taxes. Or Niagara, <laughs> Niagara or Venice. Yeah, no, Ven- no Venice. Uh, yeah, Venice. I don't know if the Italians were willing to pay that tax. <laughs> Man. <laughs> might be some mafia money. They might have to fly down to Sicily. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, as you can see right now, this, this is the map of Italy. And as I was saying, this is France right here. And I was somewhere off, over there in Paris. But yeah, just to make your trip all the way. Isn't there a like, train? Don't they have like sophisticated trains that run? They, they do. They do. It's just like, it would, this just would have been such like a, a hard way for me to do my trip. Yeah. So I was like, oh man. I, I it just was out of the way. Yeah. yeah. It was out of the yeah. way for I me you, at, at the point of time. Yeah. But you were definitely in, in Italy like a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, one place I always want to visit in Italy, I always want to visit Florence. I heard Florence has like one of the best like food and culture over there. Oh yeah. The pizza is amazing. And yeah. the steak, the Florentine. Uh, oh, yeah. They have these huge ass steaks uh, the size of uh, your head. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just, uh, they're known for that. I was recommended to have it when I was went there. Okay. 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 So like, so, yeah. so, you, did, so you did have it? <laughs> you didn't have it. Yeah. No, I did have it when I'm saying when before going there, cause I did. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you actually on this map, like exactly mm-hmm. like my trip. So I went from Venice to Florence. Okay. And then I went to Rome. And then wow. I went to a place called Tedeschina, which is just outside of Rome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went to Pompeii. I don't know if it's around there. I think it's in Lazio. Okay. Yeah, I think it's an hour out of Rome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went to Naples. Okay. I briefly stayed there. Um, oh, no, sorry. The Amalfi Coast, which is, I think, in between Rome and Naples. Uh, the okay. Amalfi Coast, so Sorrento, um, Capri, um, and then yeah, sorry. Then I went to Ma- Naples, and then from Naples I went to Palermo because that's where my dad's from. Wow. Yeah, and we Man. did that in three weeks, so it was quite a quite a trip. I wouldn't do it again, be only because you don't, you're just always on the go, right? You don't mm-hmm. really have time to absorb everything. But I would go back to the Amalfi Coast, Capri. That's Amalfi. where a lot of celebrities, I should mention, the Americans love that place. Yeah, a lot of rich people too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Rome wasn't too bad. Rome was like a cross between. Uh, it's become so commercialized, mm-hmm. but there are some places in Rome where it's like mind blowing, like the Colosseum. Mm-hmm. There are put. You know, like you you see something like a picture or something in movies, and you're like, wow, like it's so grand, it's epic, it's impressive. But in mm-hmm. real life, you'll see it, and you're like, oh, it's not that bad. Like I'll give it like the Mona Lisa, right? Well, yes. everywhere but when you finally see it it's like oh my god it's just a little like it's yeah, so small yeah. little portrait like school photo portrait right but uh, the coliseum yeah lived up to the hype yeah lived up to the hype Kate, well, so- well because hold on i just want to mention this the reason why is because it's not like it's not just a building like think about it. we have grand buildings in toronto right mm-hmm. ottawa you know new york whatever north america the western world but I, I just, as a human, I, I can't conceptualize, I can't wrap my head around this, but this was built 2,000 years ago mm-hmm. at a time with primitive technology, primitive tools and resources. And the fact that it towers over you and it's just mm-hmm. a massive structure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just, it's just history um, on display. So I, I, I wanted to mention that because I even have a photo with it. Um, and I'm like, I, I'm mesmerized by Roman history like ancient roman history and you know i think it's so um so epic and grand in scale um, okay again, well, cinematic that's so, that's so interesting i didn't know that i didn't know you were interested in rome history like that wow yeah well even my films like i intend to make uh, one or two like based in roman history um very fascinated with like the emperors and the politics um, behind it as well or? yeah but it was a di- exact the politics behind it i think more so like i'm fascinated with stories like caligula even though he was a crazy guy i think i'm more fascinated with him because he became emperor at like 23 mm-hmm. and i kind of say to myself like 23 years old you know what was i doing at 23 and <laughs> he was responsible for like the biggest empire at the time yeah it's almost like it's almost like a 23 year old getting voted into office as president for the u.s mm-hmm right and it's like you just can't wrap your head around it and the fact that you know all these uh the liberties that he had uh just the the tyranny that he um kind of exuded like onto people 
it, it's just a fascinating I, I think it's a very complex character to kind of like tackle and investigate so I don't know like those, those kinds of stories uh, I find very fascinating a lot of the emperor stories like the first emperor Augustus and really cool really cool um, everything in history you have to understand is romanticized to a degree right yeah like, we look back and say oh wow like they were like conquerors and oh man. you know they they they, <laughs> see, they saw what they want they did what they want but yeah it was it was a different time a different time for sure right? then that's such a good point history so romanticized um one thing i was very fascinated about early on this year was against kong um yeah. oh my god like the how wide his emperors like how wide he operated his land was just crazy to me. Yeah, and like biggest and empire all, in history, technically. Because yeah, any yeah, like geographically, yeah. Haiti like massacred a bunch of people, like destroyed a bunch of culture. But we know him as this guy that brought like the melon system. <laughs> right? Know? Like, yeah, I know. And it's we know amazing the good how... things about it. <laughs> but like that guy was it was the way it was a way of yeah, it was a way of it's an, it you make such a good point. Like a lot of these uh tyrannical, like historical yeah. characters you forget that they were responsible for a lot of uh, horrible, uh, horrendous uh, acts, right? Um, but at the same time, you know, we look back at them with reverence uh, with what they introduced to the world and the technologies. And we also accept as a society that was how it was back then, right? Like yeah. nowadays, everything strikes us as, oh my God, you said this and said that. And I want to just mention this, that Bill Mayer said something very interesting, something thought that very thought-provoking. Uh, um, he said, you know, our generation, you know, we're so caught up in cancel culture and we believe we we're so self-righteous that we, we wouldn't do it the, that way. We wouldn't say it that way. And everything in the past should be, you know, changed, right? Should be looked mm -hmm. at differently. And if it can't, we need to remove it from our, from our minds. But he made a good point. He's like, what you don't realize is that as, you, as generations pass, they're going to look back on your generation and say you did things wrong as well. Because mm -hmm. that's the whole that's the whole essence of being human is that you make mistakes, but you learn from them. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is that you progress as a, as a species. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, well, whatever we do in these next hundred years, you're telling me in 400 years, they're going to look back and say, Oh, they, they knew they were the prime. They were the, the B, like the top generation. No, they're going to look back and say, why was everyone staring at their phones? <laughs> why was everyone trying to get a date on Tinder and not looking someone in the eye and trying to talk? Yeah. To you know what I mean? Like they're going to pick apart whatever we pick apart before us because mm -hmm. it's easy to look back and pick apart how many things do you pick apart about your life or or, yeah. or i do my life in the past right mm -hmm. that was just a side note i want to mention because because we're on the subject of history mm -hmm. is that uh we shouldn't you know condemn the people of the past we should try to learn from it and move forward with grace yeah, yeah. hey dad like that's the side of you i didn't know about man well, yeah man. Know that me and audience learning about this side of you. I hope you enjoyed part one of today's show. Part two will be posted shortly. If you enjoyed the show, please tell your friends and family. Subscribe to the channel as well. See you next time.